I've worked so hard to make it to an Ivy League college. Well, guys, I did it. I do have to tell you, though, about my entitled sister. Why would I even bring her up in this celebration to my Ivy League acceptance? Oh, yeah, because my parents love her to death and she's their golden child, and she made a big fit about me going all the way across the country to an Ivy League school. So now, my parents aren't going to help pay for the partialness that they were going to pay for because they're saying, oh, no. You're not going to that Ivy League college anymore. You're going to the same community college that your sister got accepted to because you two need to stick together. For some of the family plays a vital role in nurturing them. And in other cases, family is not a supporting factor, but rather an abyss that never leaves you succeeding in life and keeps you beneath the shadow. And unfortunately for me, my family belongs to the latter category. I never felt bad as my parents have always put my sister first. I got selected to an Ivy League college and I could not be more happier than, well, that is, it was my dream. I just thought maybe this time my family will be happy for me and support me just to fulfill my dream. But rather than giving a pat on the back, they stabbed me to the core. They actually refused to pay the tuition fee and planned to put me and my sister in the same college. Because that's exactly what my entitled sister demanded of them. Yeah, my twin sister Sarah is a puppeteer of my parents. She's been a weak learner in adolescence, therefore my parents and I had to be there whenever she needed a helping hand. But then she became an attention seeker and always found ways to scrape extra love and care from my parents. Whenever I got sick, my parents had to rush to take care of Sarah as... She always just got a fever a day later. Even whenever I got injured, Sarah would fake her fall from a bicycle or even from her bed and just exaggerate her pain, only to shift the focus of our parents on from me to her. And my parents also did not notice or should say blindfolded themselves towards their daughter's manipulative cunningness and never looked towards me and my needs. This sickness of mind and bruising of trust made me immune to such biased behavior from my parents. Over time, I accepted the fact that I'm not one of my parents' favorite children. Neither did I come second to my parents' priority list, as that position was also taken by my entitled twin sister's obese pet cat. Well, I cleared final years of schooling with Grace as well, and... Now I'm aiming for my ultimate goal, which is to get admission in one of the Ivy League colleges. I'd shown fairly noticeable results in my schooling years, like participating in extracurricular activities such as debates and field work. Such things added extra points in my CV, which helped me to fulfill the basic criteria of an Ivy League. My teachers were also fond of me, as I was fairly a bright student in their eyes. I was guided by my teachers as well and helped me to prepare myself according to the Ivy League standards. I then appeared in SAT and ACT exams and also had worked hard to achieve the cutoff. In school days, I could only study in peace when my sister was asleep because, first of all, she was not interested in anything rather than gossiping with her girlfriends about the football team's jacked guys. And her other interest was to demean me in front of our parents and spoil my efforts to reach my goal. You see, she deliberately attempted to sabotage my studies even in the times of exams I could only study when she also wanted to do so. Most of the study time I spent was trying to explain to her the tiniest of things which even a kindergarten kid would understand. She also passed on a margin, and that was too because I used to give my honest effort to the making sure that she at least passed her test and got promoted to the next class. Otherwise, she would have been struggling to clear even a middle school exam, and she knew this. That's why she never pushed me too hard and let me have a piece of fortune, which I had actually earned. It was like a feudal system of bargaining. Though... She was adamant to keep me under her leash, and therefore she used to do all these mischievous things, including making me look bad in front of our parents, and I could not resist any of her demands just like our parents. Because I used to think that my sister is just one naively evil creature, and someday 
Maybe she'll understand that whatever she has done with me is wrong, and will realize that how dedicated and caring I had been throughout those years, only because I love my family and cannot live without them. Even though it's been absolutely excruciating, but sadly, guys, she proved me wrong. You see, I had gotten selected in the Ivy League college finally as my overall resume, including SAT and ACT scores, were noteworthy. And upon that, I had applied earlier to my desired colleges, which also gave me an edge over the other candidates. I was very happy when I got the selection letter, and when I told my parents, they also, well, hugged me. Though my sister Sarah dodged my hug and hurriedly walked away to the exit door by faking a call from her friend. My parents decided to celebrate my achievement at dinner. That was quite an amazement for me, as I don't remember when the last time my parents cheered for me was, for my success. I started to think that maybe now things will change and I'll get my due love. And recognition from my parents, you know, which was only reserved for my twin sister Sarah till that time. On the dinner table, my parents brought a chocolate cake to celebrate my success. Though... They didn't even know that I liked butterscotch and it's Sarah whose favorite flavor is chocolate. But I keep my rationality in a backyard again, as always, and felt happy as at least my parents were finally congratulating me for success at last. And showed that they were with me with my success as a caring family. And to my surprise, my sister Sarah was also sitting joyously on the dinner table while feeding my cake by her own hand. For once, I thought that it was something out of a dream or fantasy, but it was the truth that was happening in real time, and guys, I almost got emotional. But I kept it to myself, as I had trained myself to contain my emotions to me, and only, and never let anyone else have a grasp of what I'm feeling. Over the time, it had become my usual habit, and then it got, well, I don't know, assimilated to my character. Sarah even gifted me a pin, though I had always gotten a pin from my parents on each birthday, but this time, well, it was from Sarah, who gave something to me. I took it warmly, and she hugged me and said that I'm the best. That absolutely hit me like a bullet, but I was in awe rather than wiggling in pain. Though, she had more than just a bullet for me, it was a bomb, which was lurking to have a blast. After dinner, I was about to move dishes to the sink as it was my turn, or should I say, it was always my turn. My sister stood up and raised a toast for me, and I was eagerly looking at her to hear what she had to say for me as she had never said anything nice about me since the day she started to speak. Like, I sometimes used to think out of amusement that her first words must have not addressed mom or dad, but rather, she had blurted, Kill Jim. Or something like, I will enslave Jim for the rest of his life. Maybe something like that. Sarah started remembering the times from the other annals of history where I used to be there whenever she needed help. Like, when somebody threw her lunch away to bully her and I came to the rescue and shared my lunch with her. Though it was Sarah who bullied the sweetest girl who came to share her lunch with me. And she threw that girl's lunchbox, also hers, as they both were identical. And then she snatched away my lunch while threatening me that she'll lie to our parents that I was the one who ate her lunch. So, as a narcissist, she could never find her mistake and she was an expert when it comes to dodging a feeling of guilt by fabricating her own truth. I wish I had this superpower, you know. She then started to talk about how... I've always helped her in academics, which is why she was able to clear the exams throughout school. Which was, I guess, the first instance in my life where she was not lying about my positive contributions in her life. It sort of made me teary-eye, as this was the one and only thing I always desired from my sister. And that she accepts my importance in her life and shows gratitude. She then became emotional and said that she simply would not be at this place if she did not have Jim as her brother, which was me, of course. She then came close to me and hugged me while I was sitting awestruck on the chair, and she finally said these words. If only there was a way to be with my dear brother. 
I failed to process my emotions and just could not say anything. She was crying, and so was I, and then our parents also came to us, and it was a big family hug. For the first time in my life, I was feeling this connection with my family, which I never experienced but also longed for. But maybe it was just a dream. Or should I say maybe a reenactment of my dream? Maybe the reality was going to be even more brutal and harsh than it was before. Let us just hope for the best. Please share your views and let me know whether I should be concerned or not. Thank you. Update number one. Hello people, I read your comments and would say many of you guessed it right. It has gone absolutely downhill since then. Let me share you exactly what happened. Next morning, I sat at the dining table for breakfast and found that everything was going as the last night never happened. Nobody looked at me, so I said good morning to all them, and yet they continued in their work. Only Mother replied in a bit of a mumble, while Father just flipped another page on the newspaper, and Sarah only gave a smirk, and stood up to go and stormed out to the exit door. I felt like all the love they showed me was a lie, or either a dream, or maybe I was expecting too much for them after yesterday's emotional family dinner. Before I could ask anything, my mom put my breakfast on the table, which was as usual. I'd realized that yesterday was a dream, and now I was back to reality, which has always been sullen like my staple breakfast. Then, my father placed a newspaper on the table and had a sip of coffee while they adjusted the specs, which had always been a sign for my beratement. Then he spoke without any hesitation and had told me that Sarah is also going to join in my college. Well, I was surprised when I heard this because how can Sarah join an Ivy League college when she had not met a single criteria except for her, uh, I don't know, narcissism? To embolden my bewilderment, my mom said that they had decided to put me in whichever college that Sarah actually qualifies for admission to. And as parents, it's their duty to not discriminate between both of their children, you know. I jumped up from my position with sheer disbelief, but then Father spoke with a stern voice and said that, to ensure fairness, they've decided to not give me any tuition fees for some fancy college. Instead, they'll invest the money in renovation of the house. This time, it was beyond my understanding, and I could not fathom this fact that my own parents could do this to me. I was the first in their whole family who was going to a prestigious Ivy League college, and they also celebrated this just yesterday. How could someone change their mind overnight to this magnitude? I was fed up, and for the first time in my life, I retorted and raised my voice against my parents, and raised a hefty objection against their decision. This did not go as well as I had predicted, and I ended up going on without eating breakfast. I came back late evening and reached my sister at her room. She was jovially talking to somebody on the phone and just suddenly cut the call as she saw me. I sat on a chair and asked her for help to convince our parents to listen to me and let me join the Ivy League college. And she responded and said, well, where am I going to go? So I told her that our parents have decided to put me in the same college of hers and that they're going to spend my tuition fee on renovation of the house. The moment I said that, she gets so excited and the house is getting a makeover, which she was wanting for so long and she continued talking about what things she would like to do with her room and other stuff. I was fuming over the chairs as I've had enough. I tried to speak but she did not listen like I simply wasn't there so I shouted at her to stop her rant and just listen to me, you know. But she got upset and acted like I hurt her and warned me to get out of her room or else she's going to tell our parents that I was harassing her. Well, how could my own family be so cruel to me? The question was pounding in my head and it made me so depressed that I thought about hurting myself in my room. And well, the door of my room was opened and I was waiting for someone to come to stop me from, well, hurting myself. But nobody seemed to even want to come, and it absolutely broke my heart, as I was just about to jump, 
and the door slid a bit, and I eagerly looked towards it to see who it was, but it was just my sister's pet cat. It absolutely broke my heart, and I alighted on the floor and sat with the cat while crying out loud. At night, while having dinner, my parents happily told Sarah that they've decided to put both of us in the same college just as she wanted. Sarah stood from her chair and just had a little bit of ecstasy. Not because I was going to be with her in the college helping her in every single exam. Oh no. But she was more than happy because she succeeded in crushing my dreams forever. I sat there with clenched fists as my parents were congratulating Sarah while she was hugging them and she said she loves her parents and they all hugged each other while I was sitting on the opposite side of the table in deep distress. I could not bear that anymore and I dabbed my fist on the table and just to rivet the attention. My father, he rebuked me for acting sincerely and my mother also, well, said a couple words to me by saying that I'm such a bad example of a brother who could just not be happy for his sister. I shouted at them and threw a glass on the floor. They were stunned by seeing my anger and my parents stood from their chairs. I screamed out all the pain I was hauling inside me and I said that they're a disgrace to the position of parents. They're nothing but a stooge to their entitled good-for-nothing daughter who cannot see her brother's success. My so-called fake sister cried, which angered me even more, and I laughed at her for being such a fake person. I said that even her cat is more sensitive towards others than she is, and I called her a very bad word. Which escalated quickly, but I still don't regret saying these things. Though, after cursing her, she ran to her room, and my mother went behind her, while my father came to me and literally slapped me as hard as he could. Then, my mother also joined my father as Sarah locked herself in her room. My mother cursed me that she wishes if she only had Sarah, and that I had been nothing but a nuisance since the day that she actually conceived me. I got furious and took a knife, and told my mother to just do it to me now. My mother started crying, and she hid behind my father and called me, saying that I'm a psychopath. My father also called me some other names as he threatened me that he's going to call the police. I just laughed at them and walked away from the house. Well, this was a nightmare, guys. Currently, I'm posting this from my friend's house and I don't know what's going to happen next. But I'll try to update whenever things get a bit better. Thanks for the support. What's up, everybody? Mr. Redito here. So, there's two more updates. However, we're going to jump ahead a whole year. That's right, Jim, aka OP, did not post again for a whole year, and this post was actually deep in the comment section. It looks like this was a reply to one of the commenters asking, Jim, what the heck is going on? Tell us an update. So, here it is, update number two, one year later. Hello, everyone. It's Jim again. I'm updating after a year interval. I just needed a break as the last year was quite a mayhem for me, though it transformed me for my own good. I had a lot of pitfalls in my personal life, but glad that it's never influenced my career goals. Even though I'm a rationalist, I also sometimes think that things happen for good when subsequent circumstances come out to be revelations about your future, which seems bright for me. So, after that night, I was wandering to the empty streets as it was raining. Yeah, it was raining, and when everybody was in their home with families having dinner, with a warmth of love and care, I was strolling on a secluded path alone. But, I don't know, I didn't feel scared or depressed, it was rather an energizing moment for me as I was feeling free from burden. Then I went to my friend's house and told him all about the incident. Next day, I just borrowed a little bit of money from him and took a bus to my grandma's downtown. My grandparents were well aware of the discrimination I was facing in my own parents' hands. My grandfather used to say to come with him, but I always refused as I didn't want to hurt my parents. My grandfather was a government official back in the day, and he's a reputed person overall. After retirement, he bought farmland in some ancestral town and started living in a huge farmhouse with my grandma, who was also a schoolteacher. 
I used to wait for summer holidays only to spend it with my grandparents and just living carefree on the farm and wandering into the town while my parents and my entitled sister were visiting Disneyland in France and just traveling all over the country for summer. I never liked going with them. That is why I used to act as if I was ill, only to spend my summers in my grandparents' house. Well, the farmhouse, with all the love and care one could ever imagine. As my grandparents opened the door, they did not ask a single word and made a room for me to get comfortable. My grandmother made her special chicken soup for me. As they understand, since I was having a cold, the next day I told them what happened back in my former house and my grandfather said that my father had called him already and that they had decided to disown me. Before I could dwell in distress, my grandparents surprised me with a cake and it was a butterscotch one. Then they congratulated me for my Ivy League success. I was happy that at least someone knew I like butterscotch, but I didn't show much overt emotion and sat with them and tried to enjoy it. After the cake party, my grandparents gave me a gift. It was not a pin, but an envelope, and I opened it and then of course read it. I could not believe that it was happening. I just could not hold back my tears and I hugged them. It was a confirmation letter from the college which only comes when the tuition fee has been deposited. I hugged my parents before at that dinner night when things started to go downhill, but this time it was going to be alright, as my grandparents were far better human beings. After that, I started working part-time in a local supermarket, as it was our family tradition, which says that one has to learn how to support oneself financially after joining college. My grandfather also had worked in that supermarket, so did my father, and now it was my turn. I also did chores around the house so that my grandparents don't have to do much physical work except for walking along the boundaries of our farmland. I've been living with my grandparents for one year and doing well in college as well as in my personal life. My former parents did not even bother to come here at once, nor did they try to contact me through my grandparents, though I also have forgotten them for good and am looking forward to my future. I'm feeling optimistic and also have made some friends on campus and I think life is not that cruel. It can be enjoyable sometimes. Update number three. Two years later. Hey guys, it's been quite a while, you know. I guess almost two years since I last updated about my life story. Thanks for all the support throughout this journey. I recently graduated and it was like a dream come true. My grandparents attended the convocation ceremony as my guardians and they were very happy when I received the fellowship. It was quite an emotional moment for me, you know. I also got paid internship offer from a reputed firm and to celebrate this, my grandparents organized a family gathering in which they also invited my former parents and entitled sister Sarah. And the party just got started. Considering my grandfather's reputation, the guests were obviously going to be who's who of the town and the city as well. I did not believe that my former parents would come to the party, especially when the party was celebrating their disowned son's success. I laughed when my grandfather told me a day before the party that my former parents had agreed to come to the party. But then, my grandfather told me that the Farmer Association head was also coming to the party and my former father wanted to meet him personally, just to convince him in order to attain a contract for the food processing unit. My grandfather had refused to use his influence, though. At the party, everybody congratulated me and it went well. As my former parents did not even come close to me and my former entitled sister, Sarah, was busy devouring these delicious foods made from fresh, farm-grown ingredients. I heard that she got expelled from college because she failed to clear her first-year examination for the last three years. And then, out of frustration, she decided to cheat and get caught not once but multiple times. Later in the party, my former parents came to me and insisted that I come with them. I looked at my grandparents and they nodded. Meanwhile, my former parents apologized to me for acting so wrongfully and also said that they want to make amends and adopt me back to the family as they had made a terrible mistake of disowning me. I was about to get trapped in their emotional dialogues, 
but then suddenly the farming organization's head pushed me by mistake and then apologized and stopped there as he recognized me to congratulate me for my success. My former parents just abruptly pushed me to the side to have a bit of a chit-chat with them. They started lauding me as their son and said that they helped me a lot in the pursuit and that's why I became so successful, you know. The farming organization head did not seem impressed and he just stared at them with judging visage. Then he berated my former parents and said that he knows that they had already disowned me a long time ago and he was only silent because he didn't want to insult my grandfather's son which is my former father, otherwise he would not have let my former family even come near this town or to me. Well, after listening to this, my former parents cursed me in silence and went to another room. After the party ended and my former parents were about to move, my grandfather stopped them and said that he wants to announce his property will to his family. The moment he said that, my former family suddenly shifted their tone and sat down on the couch with a fake grudge along with my former entitled sister, Sarah. Who, by the way, was hearing every single word of it while eating chocolate pie. Then my grandfather opened up a file and revealed that my grandparents, together, have decided to nominate me as the rightful owner of 80% of their property and the rest of the 20% will be going to Sarah. The moment my grandparents told this, my former sister Sarah jumped on her position and showed her disagreement before anybody could even say a word. She started, well, getting mad at me and said that I am not a part of this family as her parents had officially disowned me three years ago. Therefore, I don't have any say nor do I have any share in the ancestral property and she also called me a selfish piece of crap. My grandparents nodded affirmatively with her sentiments and said that they would like to make some changes to the will actually. Upon this, Sarah lauded them with cheers and acted like she achieved some award. And also her parents smiled a bit at her pride. Then my grandfather said that they've decided to give all their property to me since I've been with them for the last three years and took care of them wholeheartedly. And since they hold the power of authority to their property, they can do as they please, you know. My former parents stood up in disbelief and Sarah started acting rudely. But my grandparents did not say a word and kept on smiling as my former parents were trying to engage them in an argument. Meanwhile, Sarah shouted, I hate you, and ran to adjacent rooms and locked herself from the inside. And My former parents started knocking at the door while trying to talk with Sarah. My grandfather signaled me and went to the basement for a toolkit. Then as I came back, I heard screaming of my former mother. They all were standing next to the window of the room in which Sarah was making, well, a device to hurt herself. The window was blocked by a metal grill, so nobody could go inside from the window, and Sarah was negotiating with my grandparents and was forcing them to give her all the property as she is the only grandchild they have since I was disowned by my parents. My grandfather was laughing at her from the outside and he mocked her by saying that she can't even tie a good knot and asking for their property and he called her an imbecile and her parents a bunch of idiots. This enraged Sarah as much that she then really tied, well, a device around her neck and stood on the chair. Well, my former parents begged my grandparents to accept Sarah's wish but my grandfather refuted them by saying, that Sarah's not a good kid whose wish, well, he has to grant as he's not a Santa Claus. Meanwhile, I managed to pick the lock on the door and opened it without making much of a noise. I then told my grandfather about this and he said not to reveal it and just let the drama play out. Sarah then placed her feet on one side of the chair and continued to threaten my grandparents, though she was quite scared as I could clearly see it in her face. My grandfather again laughed at her and teased her by saying that she's such a pathetic human being who is good for nothing and Sarah got annoyed and she was shouting as her foot slipped and well, she, well, fell from the chair and the device was doing its job. Later, we all walked into the room where Sarah was laying on the floor in pain. Don't worry though, the device didn't work. She just fell and broke her ankle. It wasn't tied properly and it loosened up when she fell from the chair. 
Her incompetence saved her for good, and I and my grandparents were trying to control our laughter, while Sarah and her parents just kept denouncing us till they moved out of the house. Wow. And then they disappeared with their car, never to show their faces again. Finally, I could take a breath of fresh air in the scenic sunsets of the countryside. So this story has a little bit of a twist. And what I mean by this is, at the end of the story, a lot of the commenters, if not 99% of them, were saying, Hey, we were with OP, we were with the grandfather, the entire story, and yeah, well, OP's sister, she was out of line. But what the grandfather did at the end of the story was basically abuse. I mean, he was calling her stupid, useless, worthless, to the point where she actually wanted to hurt herself. So I do want to hear from you guys exactly if you think the grandpa went way too far at the end, but were you in agreement for the rest of the story? Drop it down below, let's discuss it, and also, let me know what you think about the parents treating OP's sister as the absolute golden child. If you guys are new to the channel, my name's Mr. Redito. It's so nice to have you guys here today. I'm gonna be here tomorrow and the next day as well, so I hope to see you then. Click that subscribe button, and remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya!